The James Webb Space Telescope provides astronomers with an unparalleled view of the cosmos, revealing intriguing discoveries that continue to captivate the scientific community. But how does it function? What makes it tick? And most of all, how is it changing astronomy as we know it? Welcome to Lab 360, it's time to explore. A massive rocket ignited on Christmas morning 2021. It shot into the cloud-laden sky, quickly soaring away from the land and heading for the depths of deep space. Its goal was to reach a location 5 million kilometers from Earth, where the gravitations of the Sun and our planet collided in a unique way. The cargo would be kept in space at this position, known as a Lagrange point, fixed in respect to the Earth as it circled the Sun. After arriving at its destination, this payload began its cautious deployment. As hexagonal mirror pieces expanded and snapped into place, vast sheets unfurled to shade it from the brightness of the Sun. And thus began the exploration of the cosmos via the James Webb Space Telescope. But there is a physical limit of how far we can see into space. All cameras aboard the James Webb Space Telescope are capable of seeing beyond that, using infrared light, which is invisible to the human eye. The wavelength of light is continuously being expanded as it moves across space. When something is extremely far away, the light will be bent to the point that it is invisible to us when it gets here. And the James Webb Space Telescope has MIRI, or the Mid-Infrared Instrument, one of those cameras which helps astronomers to see beyond the invisible light. Watch what happens when light falls on it. The light is broken up into various wavelengths by a sophisticated system of mirrors and filters, which are then scaled and directed onto the sensors. MIRI's sensors are made up of arsenic and silicon, it has the ability to detect this extremely stretched thin light and even beyond it. But how do they function? These sensors, like ordinary camera sensors, transform photons of light into electrical impulses. But in order to detect the weak signals of infrared light, the sensors on MIRI must be exceptionally sensitive. Increase in sensitivity equals to increase in noise, which leads to grainy images the issue complicates even more, since Webb is picking up infrared light. Everything in our universe emits heat energy, some of which takes the form of light. Most items aren't hot enough to generate visible light, but they do release a lot of infrared light. The more heated an object is, the more infrared light it emits. As a result, James Webb would release so much infrared light that its sensors would be entirely drowned out. Therefore, in order to minimize the quantity of infrared light emitted by the telescope, its cameras must be kept at a temperature of minus 234 degrees Celsius. And for MIRI to function at minus 234 degrees, it is situated beneath the thick, five-layered solar screen. Just this alone reflects a great deal of heat, bringing Webb's cameras down to about 234 degrees. Being extremely sensitive is a problem which it creates for itself. Dark current. This is where the atoms within the sensor shake and incorrectly detect a photon of light, adding to the noise. Because temperature is just a measure of how rapidly an atom vibrates, Reducing the temperature reduces the vibration and hence the quantity of dark current. The vibration of these atoms would be too strong for Mary's sensor, so they must be cooled all the way down to negative 234 degrees. At this temperature, the atoms in the sensor are nearly totally motionless, decreasing noise and allowing weak infrared signals to peek through allowing us to make discoveries that would change our perception of the universe forever. And one of the latest discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope is this. Known as the Brick, this massive cloud of molecular gas is located close to the core of our Milky Way galaxy. 
The James Webb Space Telescope has discovered a significant quantity of carbon monoxide ice within it. The brick earned its name because it is a black slab that is positioned against the galactic center's furnace, despite the fact that many of these clouds are actively creating stars. It's still unclear why the brick hasn't actually started to produce stars. A plausible hypothesis is that the brick is a young cloud that hasn't had time to create stars. Another possibility is that the gas inside it is too turbulent, or that magnetic fields are keeping it from collapsing because it is being supported. Such gaseous collapse is usually the first step toward the creation of stars. The riddle has now been further expanded by the JWST. The brick has an enormous amount of carbon monoxide ice, according to the Satellite Observatory. Although carbon monoxide ice has previously been found at the galactic center, where it condenses on dust particles, it is often difficult to find in the interstellar medium. As a result, the amount of ice contained in the galactic center's nebulas is a mystery to science. For this reason, the discovery that the JWST's near-infrared camera, near CAM, had picked up so much of the material shocked researchers, under the direction of Adam Ginsberg of the University of Florida. Our observations compellingly demonstrate that ice is very prevalent there to the point that every observation in the future must take it into account," said Ginsberg in a statement. Cold temperatures molecular gas can drop to as low as 10 degrees above absolute zero, unnecessary for star formation to begin. The lowest temperature in the cosmos is, to put it in context, absolute zero. In contrast to other molecular clouds, the gas in the brick is very warm, as detected by the JWST, despite the ice's abundance. The next step, the team says, is to use the JWST to discover what other ices are to be found in the brick and other nearby nebulas in the galactic center. Researching the galactic core might have implications for cosmology. It is believed that the general star-forming conditions found in the galactic center are the closest representation of the star-forming circumstances seen in the early cosmos. Supermassive black holes may have originated from the gravitational collapse of massive molecular clouds, according to certain hypotheses. A persistent obstacle to this idea, meanwhile, has been the unanswered question of what stopped the collapsing clouds from breaking apart and creating several stars instead of a single black hole. The opaque boundaries of nebulas like the brick may provide clues to the solutions. As such, going back to the drawing board would not only be required, but will be an absolute necessity. Whatever the universe is hiding from us is only a matter of time. We will soon have the answers, or rather, know the places where we could find them. Like I said in the beginning, the James Webb Telescope is changing astronomy as we know it. What do you guys have to say? Drop in your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360, because together, we will explore.